Hey, this is Chad with Be Gone For Good. Today I'm gonna to be talking all about the equipment that I use to moto vlog and why I think you should be doing it too. Stay tuned. Right, today's video I'm really excited about because this is something that I started probably about two years ago. Uh, rather simply, you can go all the way back to my first video if you wanna see it, but uh, I started moto vlogging for a variety of different reasons, which we'll get into. And this is all the equipment that I've collected so far. So if you're watching the current videos, this is the equipment that I'm using to bring you some of the shots that I'm taking on the bike, the studio stuff that I'm doing, the sound, the lighting, everything that's involved in bringing Be Gone For Good to you today. So I'm gonna start off with my cameras that I use, uh, just so you can get a handle on what different kinds I have and why I have different kinds. First off, here's the mother of cameras that I have. This is the big uh, GH5S from Lumix or Panasonic. It's got a Sigma 13 or 18 to 35 on it. Uh, this is essentially a manual focus lens. It's got autofocus capabilities, but it doesn't really work that well for that. Um, so everything that you see from this camera is a manual focus. Uh, which is why I get really great depth of field, which is why sometimes things are fading in and out uh, of focus and uh, what I think is a pretty good look. Some people don't really like it, but uh, I like that this gives a little bit more of a filmic feel to some of the videos. So if you see anything and you're out and you think like, wow, that looks, looks really great, 99 times out of 100, it's probably from this camera. Um, this is also probably one of my more expensive pieces that I carry with me. Uh, so when it's on the bike, I have to really secure this. I have to make sure that it's uh, in a place that's very safe because sometimes uh, the jittering or the vibrations of the bike uh, can really mess up a lot of the internal systems on here. So I have to take really, really good care of this while this is traveling with me. You'll also notice that a lot of the other uh, moto vloggers that are out there that are making really, really sharp looking films are using a camera like this in order to be able to do it, not just GoPros or something along those lines, but are, are using a top-notch camera to make that happen. That's why I got this. I've been really happy with it. This is this is the masterpiece maker right here. From there, I have a bevy of GoPros, a whole slew of them, and I'll take you through chronologically which ones I got first. So the first one I had was the Hero 4. This has the hard plastic case on the outside. Um, it was one of the first GoPros that I think really stepped up enough to be used as a, a camera on a motorcycle. Ultimately, this is the one that if I do lose, I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. So I'll put this in more precarious situations than I would the other two GoPros that I have, which are more valuable to me. So this is my kind of throwaway GoPro, the one that I'm gonna put uh, on the side of the road. If it happens to get lifted, it gets lifted, whatever. This is gonna be the one that I use for that. Um, the next one that I got was the one that mounts to my helmet. This is the uh, Session. It's a super small GoPro. It's super easy to use, just one button, click, click to turn it on and off. Uh, it mounts to the helmet, so there's a lot less drag, there's a lot less weight from this. And I have various different mounting places around the helmet, from on the visor to the left side, the right side. I haven't figured out how to do a solid mount on the front, just because I have a modular, so it kind of screws everything up. But this is the one that I use for um, for helmet mount stuff. So anything you see helmet mount is coming off of the session. The last one I have is the Hero 5. This one has image stabilization that is really good compared to the previous two. Um, so that's why it's in the in the mix. I sometimes will mount this to the bike. This goes on the crash bars, this goes on the front, this goes on the swing arm, places where I'm gonna get, trying to get a little bit better shot. Uh, this is the camera that I use for that. Uh, the sound coming out of this one is also a little bit better than the four because it doesn't have that hard plastic case around the outside. So I'm a big fan of this. If you step up to the current models that GoPro is offering, the Hero 8, I think, the image stabilization is just out of this world. So if you are in the market for a GoPro or you wanna have uh, some cameras on your bike, the GoPros are a great way to go. Uh, there are some things that you're gonna to wanna to finagle with the settings if you wanna get really good footage out of it, something that's, I think, watchable for, for most people. If you have a question about that, leave me a comment down below and I'll give you a little bit more of the specs on, on some of the things you're gonna to wanna to do to a GoPro if you get that and wanna be shooting off of the bike just to make it a bit more realistic, a bit more filmic, if you will. Okay, for the last camera on the list, um, I'm gonna put this in kind of a different category because obviously it's a it's a drone. 
So the drone that I use is the DJI Spark. Uh, it's a nice, really cheap drone. Uh, doesn't cost a lot. Uh, the film quality is good enough. Um, obviously, if I'm going to be doing a feature length, something that I'm going to put on a big screen, this is probably not going to this is probably not going to cut it. But again, traveling on the bike, getting in dirty places, sometimes dropping the bike in water, sometimes being in places where things are going to be confiscated or or whatever. This is exactly the sort of drone that I want to have with me because uh, it does what it needs to do. But if it disappears on me, it's it's not the biggest loss. It's not a thousand dollars. I want to say it's like a three hundred dollar drone as compared to the thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollar um, other DJI offerings that are out there. So it's got a remote that goes along with it. So both of these have to travel with me at all times if I want to get drone footage. And uh, this is a really great model. It's super easy to fly. There's no learning curve to it. The uh, instrumentation or the things that you need to know in order to be able to fly it also super easy so this is this is my go-to for any sort of the drone shots that you see in the film all right now that we've gone through the cameras let me talk a little bit about some of the accessories that I have for the cameras just to make my shots uh, a little bit better um, to fall in line with what I'm looking for as far as my, my filmic look trying to get a little bit more cinematic with the the film rather than just kind of mounting a camera and, and going First off, a necessary element, if you're gonna be filming outside with any of these cameras and you want it to look a little bit better, there's a ratio of frame rate to shutter speed that you're gonna to wanna to hit. It's generally uh, about twice that factor. It's a 180 degree rule. Um, again, if you need to know more, there's plenty of videos out there. You can leave a message down in the description or in the comments and I'll be able to answer you. But uh, one of the things that I use for the, the big camera is a variable ND filter. So it, it acts like sunglasses for your camera. It, it is able to cut some of that light out so it's not so bright as you're shooting outside and allows you to lower that, that shutter speed a little bit um, so that you can get better shots. That's one that I have for the big camera. I also carry ND filters for the drone so that I can get those same shots, really nice smooth shots with the drone uh, while using ND filters. They make them for the GoPros as well. I don't see the GoPros enough or don't use the GoPros enough to warrant having an ND filter on them. And some of the stuff that I need to be able to do with the GoPros, I just do that in post. If you're gonna be shooting, um, especially if you start hitting up into those those higher registers of your, your 4K, your 2K, things like that, you're going to need an enormous amount of storage to be able to hold all this footage. So I have hard drives that I take with me on the road. I have hard drives that I have at home to kind of archive everything. I have wireless hard drives. There's just a, a ton of storage capability. I keep one strapped to my computer at all times so that I can upload footage directly into that. But these are gonna be very, very handy if you start shooting more and more footage so that you can get that footage off of your camera, off of your cards and into something that can hold it uh, reliably and securely. Now, for sound, there's a couple of different options for you. I use a lav mic, which is just those little ones you see pinned on people's shirts and stuff. You can go back into some of my other videos, you'll see a little a little black ball right here that's, that's my microphone sometimes. That provides you some really good sound if you've got a lot of ambient noise going on around you. You can plug that directly into the camera, you can plug it into a little recorder so that you can get really quality sound that you can sync up later. Uh, when you get to post-production. I also have this little thing, which is a microphone that I mount to the top of my camera. It's got a dead cat on it so that some of the wind noise doesn't get to it, but it's just a nice, simple, uh, directional mic that you point directly at your face and you can talk into it, and it captures a much cleaner uh, much cleaner audio than you're gonna get out of a phone or, or just out of the in-camera microphone. So, nice little purchase here, especially if you want your audio to be a little bit better. Uh, microphone is a great way to go. Along with any camera, any accessories, you're gonna have just a flood of batteries and cords and uh, charging capabilities and attachments, all this stuff. This all goes with me. This all takes up a ton of space, a ton of room, a ton of weight. Uh, but this all travels with me all the time as well, uh, just so that I can make sure that everything's charged at any time. If I need to get a shot, I've got something available. If I need to offload a card to something else, one of the hard drives or a computer or upload it to the cloud, I've got cords and accessories to be able to make that happen. Uh, it's going to be a necessary part of your, your travel kit if you're traveling with cameras. Uh, it's just kind of the nature of the beast. There are some wireless capabilities out there right now. Like the camera can upload things uh, wirelessly. The GoPros can upload wirelessly. So that might save you a little bit as far as the cords are concerned, but you're gonna have cords out there, whether it's power or connection. It's just gonna be something you gotta take with you. Okay, one of the last items I would like to talk about is all the different mounts that I use. Now, everybody's seen those little stick-on mounts that they make for GoPros. Those are really great. You can stick them all over your bike, all over your helmet. 
wherever you need to have a mount, you can have those things stuck, which is really, really nice. But GoPro also makes other mounts that suction cup on different items. This is great if you just need to stick it on a car window or if you want to stick it on a window of a, a store that you're walking by or you want to just sit on the ground. It's a nice platform as well. It'll hold that camera super steady as you drive by or ride by or walk by. This is a this is a really useful piece for the GoPro if you want to mount it in different places. They also make a mount like this with a little clip on it. This goes in a lot of places that the, the other one wouldn't. If you need to go to tree branches or irregular objects, fence posts, something like that, this works really well to mount. And then you can just move this arm all around to get exactly the shot that you're looking for. So these are my GoPro mounts that I take with me. I have my camera mounts. I have the um, the Joby Gorillapod. This is really nice because you can wrap it around. It's super heavy duty, so it can handle that big heavy camera and in really uneven areas. So if you've got uh, uneven ground, gravel, anything along those lines, this is a really great mount for that big heavy camera to keep it pointed where I want it and keep it nice and stable. If I am on level ground or I need it to be a little bit higher, I also bring a full, uh, a full tripod with me. This uh, extends all the way out, I wanna say to 76 inches so I can get nice high shots. If I lift it up above my head, if I need to look over a wall, or I wanna get a nice high shot of the bikes or the environment, this can also do that. If I don't wanna bring the drone out, I can do it all on this. It's really nice, it's carbon fiber, so it's super light, super strong. And um, this has been my go-to tripod uh, since I've had this for the big camera because it's so sturdy and so capable. Another thing that I bring along for all of this gear because sometimes you can't get back to a charging area, but is a battery, some type of battery. This isn't uh, this isn't a huge one, it's not heavy. This fits right in my jacket. Uh, it takes nothing. I can charge my, my headset with this, my cameras with this. I can charge any of the other uh, optional devices with this. The only thing this will not charge is my computer, which if I'm running out of battery or on a 13 or 16 hour battery on my computer, I need to get back to a charge anyway. So this is a great item to have just so that you're not in that place where your GoPros run out of battery or your hard drives don't have a way to run and then you're stuck without being able to shoot anything. This gives you a little bit of reserve until you can get back to a charging area. Lastly, uh, we're gonna talk about some of my lighting stuff. Obviously, if we get out to the studio, I have lights out there that are they're pretty big, kind of cumbersome, but they take care of uh, they take care of what I need to out in the studio shot. You've seen the studio shot, it's just me standing in front of the map wall. I say studio, it's my garage. Uh, but that one is set up for filming in a little bit more formalized environment. It's static, so those lights never move. All of that stuff stays out there. Everything you see here and everything I've talked about today is the stuff that travels with me all the time. Another item that travels with me um, is this mount dog. It's just a simple reflector. I'm gonna open this out for you, even though it's gonna be way too big but it's just a large circular disc that has different, different patterns on it. So there's a silver one, there's a gold one, there's a white one. And all this does is help you to get light in places that you wouldn't otherwise have it. So this is a great stand-in if you're using natural light to get, um, to bounce the light into different places. If you're in a in under a dark tree, or if you just wanna have some reflection come back to you to light up your face a little bit better, this is a great option for that. It's a little bit big as far as its size, um, but it's not, it's not too cumbersome. It lays pretty flat like a pancake. It's very light. There's nothing to it. It's just a couple of pieces of fabric in there, uh, but that will, greatly change the type of shots that you're capable of getting and where you're capable of shooting because you can bring light from places that it's not normally in and shine that reflector up to get a really nice fill light uh, on whatever subject that you're shooting. So those are great items to have along with you, but I would say this is probably the tail end of what anybody would actually need to shoot out there. Um, we're out on motorcycles, so we are in sunlight often or we're just in complete blackness, but we're not generally in places where we need to add light to them in order to be able to see them. So this I would say is probably a purchase that you wouldn't necessarily need to have, but it could be nice if you get down to it. So along with all this stuff, uh, there's a bunch of other items obviously that I'm not gonna show you, but like bags and holders and foam to go around each item so that it's secure and in different cases and, and all sorts of things to, to make sure that you can drag this along with you. Uh, it is an enormous amount of gear. It is enormously difficult to remember everything and keep everything organized. But the better job you do of that organization, the more likely you are to be able to go into your bag, pull what you need and get the shot that you want. 
uh, if you are disorganized or you're just throwing it all into one big heaping pile, it's going to be very difficult to get it all out and, and assemble it properly in time to get what you actually want to get. And ultimately, the easier it is for you to film, the more likely you are to film. And that's gonna be a really important bar to jump over. If, if you make it super complicated, if you make it super difficult, uh, you won't use it. And if you're not using it, then obviously it doesn't matter how expensive your camera is if it stays in your bag. Uh, you need to have something that you're capable of taking out and, and utilizing to get that shot. Which brings me to my last piece of equipment that I take with me. Absolutely, 100%, the most important piece of equipment that I take with me because it is so easy, it is so simple. And truthfully, it is the only thing you need to start your own moto vlogging channel, to start your own motor vlogging archive or journal or whatever it is that you wanna do. This is the only piece of gear that you need and it's as simple as your phone. I'm shooting it on my phone right now. It's the phone that I carry with me every day. I have it in my pocket, always. There's no reason that I have at this point with the technology that we have today in any one of the phones to get the shot that I want, to get the film that I want, to take the audio that I want, it's all capable to be done right on the phone that's in your pocket right now. If you get none of this other stuff and you have a phone, you can start your channel today. It's that simple, it's all you have to have. Again, if you go all the way back to my first videos, they were shot on the phone in my pocket with a far less good camera than is on most phones these days, and it does perfectly admirably. It's a, it's a great job, it gets you to where you need to go to at least start. And what I would like to talk about a little bit today is why you should start and start today. Not down the line, not 10 weeks from now, not four hours from now, right now, you should be starting a moto vlog. And the reason why is a couple of reasons. One, and the one that initially drove me is that I kind of want to have memories of all this stuff. It's the reason why we take pictures to begin with is so you can, you can come back to it. You can see that moment. You can see that that time that you rode to the top of that peak or the, the first ride you had, or if it's just your ride to Starbucks, chronicle it. Maybe something happens there, maybe something doesn't, but it doesn't hurt to have it on film at this point. So I would urge you to just start chronicling and cataloging the things that you do on the bike. There will be a moment where some of those pieces that you've captured will become important to you. I don't know what it is, I don't know why it would be, but it will be. And the further you put distance between when you filmed and when you watch it, the more valuable it would be. Some people that have been riding for 30 years now, obviously technology has changed significantly, but 30 years from now, won't you love to look back and be like, oh man, that was a really cool ride. That simple Sunday where we didn't do anything, that was a really great ride, that was a beautiful day, or look at that person that I met that day, or, or we took that one trail that one time that was just, it was just ideal. Those are the things that if you don't capture them in the moment, they're gone forever. You'll never get that back. And I, I think it's a valuable thing to have in your back pocket and ready to go. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it to make those more and more valuable to you and perhaps even to others. And that brings me to my second point to why I think it's so important to moto vlog. Even if you've just started or if you've had 50 years on a bike, you have something to say that other people wanna hear. You have something that you've experienced, something that you've learned that somebody else hasn't. And they are looking to you to get that information. Uh, this is a big, big community that we're in, but we're also really tight knit. And there's an opportunity to, to do learning and networking and, and teaching while we're out there. And I think that one of the best ways to do that is by starting a channel, starting to get video out there. It's obviously the most palatable thing that people can take in. You uh, you could write something if you want, if that's the way you wanna go. I'm not a great writer, so I don't go that route. Um, you could do a podcast or something along those lines that's just audio, that's great too. I think the easiest thing to digest that's out there right now is video. It brings us really close. You can show people exactly what you're talking about and, and take people on experiences that they wouldn't otherwise have. And that's why I think it's so vitally important. There's too many people out there that think they have nothing to say, that nobody wants to hear what they have to say. And believe me, I've heard it from a lot of my own videos that nobody wants to hear what I have to say. But overwhelmingly, the reactions have been positive and not necessarily positive in this huge glowing way, but just like, hey, I didn't know that. I really appreciate that. Thanks for making a video about it. And like, this is good that you did this review because I'm thinking about buying that thing. It's that simple. You've got things on your bike right now that people are considering buying for themselves. 
that they would love to see a video. They would love to see how you strap that tank bag on or what the fitment looks like on this, or does that jacket work well enough? Or are those pants waterproof? All of those things are things you know for certain because you're using those items right now. But somebody at home is trying to figure out whether or not they want to actually make that purchase. Start that channel, start that moto vlog, start talking about the things that you're doing because it is incredibly valuable to the broader community out there. And ultimately that's part of the reason that we're all here today is because we're part of this community, this really great motorcycle community, whether it's street riders, dirt riders, adventure riders, everybody's on two wheels and trying to get as much fun out of it as we possibly can before we shuffle off this one. That's why you need to be filming and filming everything that you possibly can. Once you get that filming done, I can tell you there are a couple of different items that you can utilize for editing, for sound, for all of these different things. If you're interested in, in getting a little bit deeper into this, getting kind of a moto vlogging volume two from Be Gone For Good, uh, leave me a comment down below. Maybe I'll make that video, maybe I won't. It might be a little bit too in the weeds for most people, but there is a ton of free stuff out there. There's a ton of cheap stuff out there to really improve your videos and, and take you to that next level. So just let me know if you wanna see something like that. Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate you checking out the video and, and all this gear that's gonna be going with me. We will be doing the Mid-Atlantic. We're solidifying dates right now of exactly when we're gonna be doing that BDR. All of this will be going with me so that I can try and film it as best I can. And you'll be able to see uh, different items that I use and why I use them and where I use them uh, to make that film. So if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, subscribe to the channel. Please like this video and, and hit that bell so you can get notifications of any future updates for us. And we also, we have a Patreon page now. So uh, there's extra stuff on there, behind the scenes, kind of in-depth interviews and things like that. Uh, if you want to get a little bit more of Be Gone For Good for $3 a month, uh, you can get a whole slew of extra material out there. And there will be a lot more posted when we start doing our trips to the Mid-Atlantic and down to Honduras. You'll get a lot more information from there too. But support the channel. It's great if you do. Thank you very much uh, for everybody that's out here. Our subscriber list is going way, way up. So we probably got a few contests and giveaways that'll be coming up here in the future. Uh, keep those in mind. Keep checking out the videos. And, and thank you again for checking us out. Have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.